Hello everyone, uh, welcome you all for uh, this uh, uh, lecture series on data communication. In this lecture six, we are going to discuss on time division multiplexing. Fine. So in our previous class, we started with the discussion on multiplexing. And in multiplexing, the idea is there are n number of users, user one and to some user n, they are generating the data and this data need to be, you know, transferred through a shared medium. Right. So in that case, we multiplex this n number of inputs and transfer this through this bandwidth, which is having a very large value. And at the other end, we are going to demux it and give it to the intended users. Right. So multiplexing means you take uh, data generated by multiple sources put them together and send it through the bandwidth, a very larger bandwidth at the physical level. And we have seen two methods, uh, FDM and WV, where the bandwidth uh, is divided into frequency subbands and uh, these subbands are allocated to the user. They are dedicated subbands to the users. The another one is the WDM. So it is uh, in, used actually in the optical fiber or links where the data is 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 being you know allotted with the different wavelengths and these wavelengths are then combined together passed through the optical fiber both these two techniques are analog techniques now the pdm that we are discussing today is a digital technique right so it basically uses uh, the digital methods to implement and there are two types of PDM. The one is called as synchronous TDM, synchronous TDM. And the second technique is known as statistical TDM. Right? So we will discuss these two and uh, understand. Uh, the difference between these two techniques. So we'll start with synchronous TDM. Right? So what is synchronous TDM? So we have a multiplexer. Right? Okay. So we are going to we have a multiplexer here. So that will take users line, right? So let us assume that we have three users, A, B, and C. And they are generating the data like A1, A2, and A3. Similarly, we have B1, B2, then B3. So all these three are having data at C1, C2, C3. Right? In the synchronous TDM method, each of these users, you know, allotted time, they will be assigned the packets. So we will going to combine A1, then B1, and then C1, right? Then there will be second frame. So we are having the second chunk of data, A2, B2, 
and finally C2. Right? So this is what the synchronous TDM is. So it takes this information from three lines and clubs together. So your data rate will be now three times of it. So in this example, so there are, it means the data rate will be the n times. So that amount of uh, data rate is possible to send through this uh, synchronous TD. So this method can be viewed as an interleaving technique. Right. So it is like using two synchronous switches. So there are two switches which are synchronized. So there they are synchronized. So we are going to synchronize them. Right. So this is the pole that I can call it. Right, so this is meant for user A, this is for user B and user C. Similarly, we have user A, B and C. Okay, and it is, the TDM can be visualized like a switch. Right, they are synchronized. So at one time, the A1 is generated, then the switch is thrown to B. So now we are going to generate the B1 data. Similarly here, both are synchronized. The switch is thrown to B and finally to C, right? So to generate this kind of data. So this is the a simple method of, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, implementation of TDM. So we have a DMUX here. that is used to separate the user's data of A belonging to B and to C, right? See, the synchronous TDM, we have to observe one thing, right? So if some user does not have a data, let's take that C2 information we don't have at this time slot. Right. So here, that resource will go waste. That will go as a, here, it will, this, the, this will, we can observe that there is a empty slot. So these are the slots that are filled, but there is a empty slot here. Right. So we call this a empty slot. Right. So absence of a data by a user will create an empty slot. So that is one of the uh, uh, you know drawback we can observe in the synchronous TDM. So there is a presence of empty slot. Now there are some other issues also. See, in order for these things to work properly, the data rate coming at all these three must be equal, they must be same. For example, if I'm having a bandwidth of 120 Mbps, let us take that, that we are able to uh, transfer 120 Kbps. Then we should have 40 Kbps lines at the input of this max, right? So then we can effectively combine. So generally, it does not appear. So we need to adapt any of these following three, what we call them as data rate management techniques. Right, I hope you are getting my point. Okay, so in synchronous TDM, we are going to assume that there are three packets, right? So there are three users we have assumed. And on, on, in a given time period, the data from these lines are picked and they are combined together. Okay, this is like an interleaving synchronous switching. And if there is a 
certain data is not given by the user that will go as a empty slot correct now here what we are talking is if my bandwidth the, the, the backbone bandwidth if it is taking 120 kbps and if there are three users then i should be able to equally split them to get a better efficiency now if that is not possible then we have to adapt any of these following three techniques. This is called as a data rate management techniques. So there are three kinds of data rate management techniques. The first one is called as multi-level multiplexing. Right? What actually it is? So I'll take an example here. So if we have a multiplexer and there are two lines which are giving me an input of 40 kbps, right? But there are two other lines which are generating 20 kbps, right? So they are less than this. Then, we use multiple levels of multiplexing here, one here and one here. So the first level of multiplexing that will combine to generate a 40 kbps line. So that will support my 120 kbps line. Right. So this is called multi-level multiplexing. More than one level, we are multiplexing the data. The second technique is called as multiple slot multiplexing. Multiple slot multiplexing. What it actually means? Again, let us assume that we have a multiplexer and we have a 40 kbps, two lines of 40 kbps, right? But there is an another line which is of 80 kbps, okay? But it can only take input of 40 kbps. It means the output maximum bandwidth we have is 160 kbps. So we need to divide that into four, four 40 kbps, right? So this kind of technique, so we are going to just separate that into two lines. So take multiple slots, like here I'll be having 40, here again, one more 40, right? So my multiplexer, when I want to, so when I observe that there is three lines, okay? But we need 40 kbps input lines then we are going to use multiple slot multiplexing technique. Now there is another technique. So this is called as pulse stuffing. Right? So let's see how it looks. So again, I will be taking a simple multiplexer. Let us assume that there are three lines. One line is of 50 kbps, another is also 50 kbps. It can take 350 kbps, but we have a third line which is of only 46 kbps. It is not like in other cases. Now we are having a problem that uh, some odd numbered kind of differences we see. Then we use a method called as pulse stuffing. So let me write this as PS, pulse stuffing. So extra number of bits are added to make it as 50 kbps line so that it can be multiplexed. So there are three techniques of data rate management. One, use multiple levels of multiplexing. The second one is you create multiple slots. And the another one is you stuff with the pulses so that you can transfer the data.
So this techniques is called as synchronous TDM. Now we have another kind of TDM, which is called statistical TDM. Now in the statistical TDM, this multiplexer, okay, it will handle this empty slot very efficiently. So we have some A user. So we are having a B user and C user, and A is generating three packets, three slots, A1, A2, A3. B is also doing B1, B2, and B3, whereas C is only having C1 and C2, does not have C3. So what it does is, rather than sending an empty slot, the first frame it will send is A1, B1, and C1. The next will be A2, B2, and C2. The third will be just A3 and B3. So there will be no empty slot. Right? So it will allocate only when the data is present. So, uh, so this is something like dynamic allocation. So we are having a dynamic allocation. Dynamic allocation. Right? So this is efficient when compared to the when compared to our synchronous TDM, correct? But here the challenge will be we need to create addressing at where uh, this frame actually belongs. So we need to have a proper addressing mechanism when we are using addressing mechanism because. At the decoder side, we don't know that, you know, we, we are, they are not synchronized. So we need to give a specific address to which line it has to be sent. So addressing mechanism is what we require in case of statistical TD. Fine. So to just revisit again, what we are doing in the uh, TDM method is, or to revisit all the three techniques. In the first technique, we have a bandwidth and this bandwidth is split among the users. So we have a, from F minimum to some F maximum. We split that into smaller blocks and each user is assigned. This is user A, this is user B and user C is assigned that specific band over a full time. Whereas in the TDM technique, we are not dividing that into frequency band, right? So we have, a, what we do is, so this I'm taking with respect to time, right? So we have our bandwidth and users are given specific time allot. Right, so they are given with T1, T2, and so on. So each user will be given a time slot where they can insert their data. Okay, so that is one way. It's called synchronous TDM. If there are empty slots, we can also go with dynamic allocation resulting into what is called statistical uh, TDM techniques. Fine. I hope you understood this concept of uh, multiplexing. There is a second kind of technique for effective utilization of the bandwidth, which is called spread spectrum. Now, the idea of this spread spectrum is very simple. Right? So, let's see that. So, this is the bandwidth that we are sending the data. Right? So, this is my a signal which is after uh, the modulation we have we have obtained. Now we pass it to and one more block. It is called as spreading process. Spreading process. So this is the user generated data between some very narrow band F one to F. Now, we are going to 
spread it using some okay let's let's not worry about this so we are we are going to spread it so what we are going to do in spread spectrum this data is spread across the complete bandwidth so if my bandwidth is having f minimum to f max this small bandwidth information is spread across this complete bandwidth so there are two techniques uh, that can be done the first one is called as frequency hopping spread spectrum spread spectrum so this is known as fhss and there is one more spread spectrum technique called as direct sequence spread spectrum or dss right so let us see one after the other that how see the pro, the the, pro, the objective here is the user is bandwidth is there at a uh, very narrow bandwidth and now we have to utilize the bandwidth effectively so fdm and tdm there we split in uh, frequency in tdm is split in the time whereas here we have to observe we take this the bandwidth of the other mean the the original signal and we spread it across the channel so that is called as a spread spectrum technique so effectively we can uh, use the uh, the either the channel bandwidth so let's take one first one it's called fhss frequency hopping spread spectrum so in frequency hopping spread spectrum this is the block diagram we have this is my input signal and this is my spreaded sequences okay the, the, the information is spread across now it uses one block called as so this block is called as frequency synthesizer and the input to this frequency synthesizer is a table we call this as frequency table we have a table this we call it as frequency table and this table we give it with one more special block called as pseudo random number generator okay a computer generated random numbers now how it works so it will what what is actually happening here is we have our signal that is the, the source is generating some signals here okay at, and it is varying between a given very narrow band frequencies now the randomly we generate one number and we generate a frequency value the synthesizer will generate that oscillation and we are going to model it how we are going to visualize it so we have set up range of frequencies here. right so range of frequencies we are going to see okay so we have range of frequencies over the given time so if i plot time versus frequency right so this is my time and frequency the data is randomly made to jump from one band to the another band from here to here from here 
to here, covering the entire spectrum. It means over the entire frequency band, we are going to make our, uh, our data to hop. So it's called as frequency hopping spread spectrum, right? So if I compare it with the FDM techniques that we discussed earlier, right? So if I plot P versus F, this one complete bandwidth is given to one user, right? So the user are using, this is user one, this is for user two. Whereas in, in the uh, a frequency hopping spectrum, each user will generate their own random number. So user one might come here at, at very different uh, spots, right? So this kind of technique is called as a frequency hopping spread spectrum. Now there is another kind of technique, which is called as direct sequence spread spectrum. Now this spectrum is, see, let, let's take one illustration. So we have our binary data, which is given in the NRZ form. Okay, so there are zero is given as minus V volts and one is given as, this is my one, this is zero and this is one. And we are going to use one code. Okay, so let's call this code as one, one, zero, one. Right, so I'm having one, one, zero and one. Right, so we have one, one, zero, and one. So again, uh, I'll be having like this. So this is my next sequence now. One, one, zero, one. Right? So now again, I have this sequence here. So I'll be having one, one, zero, one. Right? Now what we do in this technique is, we multiply these two sequences, these sequences, this with this. So when I multiply, I'll get this as, I'm going to get the same information, right? Now when I multiply this with minus V volts, I'm going to get this sequence as inverted one, right? So this we are having with minus V volts. So this one will become minus V, minus V, and the zero will become then plus V, right? So we see that using such kind of coding, we are able to modulate. So again, I'm having one, so I'll get this waveform like this, right? So this is my data, which has been spread. So this is having a certain frequency. Now this uh, code is having a higher frequency. Now I am able to spread my data across this larger bandwidth. So for each user, I can use different codes, right? So this is what we call it as direct sequence spectrum. The implementation is very simple. You use a multiplier, give the input data, give one code generator. So this code generator, here it is called as chips. These codes are called as chips generator. Right, so randomly generate the code for each user, use that uh, pattern to modulate. So this is the second type of technique, which is called a spec spectrum technique, right? So we have discussed uh, two uh, varieties of bandwidth utilization techniques, the multiplexing. There are two analog techniques there, FDM and PDM. In FDM, we observe that for each user are assigned a bandwidth over a complete time period. Whereas in the TDM, I'll just write that. In TDM, if I plot T versus uh, the frequency, the users are given Okay, based upon the time. So each user 
are given the complete bandwidth. This whole bandwidth is given in a given time slot. Whereas in, in the FDM technique, for the complete time duration, only a part of the frequency is given, F1, F2, F3, right? Now to see that, to achieve the advantage like complete bandwidth over for the complete time period, spread spectrum sounds to be a very interesting solution, right? So when you take your data, make it jump across this uh, uh, bandwidth. So it will spread it across the bandwidth, right? So complete bandwidth is there uh, over uh, the time period. The other one is you use codes in order to modulate. So that you get spread it for the complete band. So now there will be no interference between the users. FDM, uh, the frequency hopping spec spectrum is a bit more complex in implementation when compared to the direct sequence spec spectrum technique. Okay, so this is about the uh, multiplexing and uh, bandwidth utilization techniques. Uh, so in the next class, uh, we will discuss on switching. So that is another very uh, important part in the, in the physical layer operation. We need to uh, understand the difference between the circuit switching and the packet switching so that the data link layer and uh, the network layer can be well understood. So thank you very much. So we'll see you in the next class.